First they'll force us back to school, then they'll take social distancing away from us completely. And I'll be out of my room having to hang out with you. You're out of your room hanging out with me now. So, I think the pandemic might have fixed South Park. Allow me to explain. South Park has put itself through the ringer for a while now, starting a movement in an attempt to get itself canceled, making Randy the lead character, turning Garrison into the President of the United States, actively responding to fan criticism with super transparent meta commentary with Integrity Farms, and probably the worst offender, serialization having an ongoing story throughout various episodes. It worked at first, but fell apart after the second serialized season. For varying reasons each season, 2016, they practically revolved the entire show around the election, only for everything to get derailed, and the other seasons kind of just repeated the same joke every episode, accumulating into Randy's entire personality becoming... Quieres? The show began to lose what made it special, and that really came down to the focus on Randy a character who worked best when he didn't eclipse the boys. South Park was a show that never took itself too seriously, using its medium to tell larger-than-life social commentary that, as the cool kids would say, told it like it is, poking fun at the fact that everyone is flawed and we are all capable of investing our time and energy into things that don't really matter in the long run. However, with Randy basically taking over as the lead focus, he more often than not had to be the driving force of a conflict and reduce the kids' screen time down to the typical Cartman being a menace subplot. They often weren't the ones going on absurd adventures anymore. We no longer had their different perspectives to bounce off of. And the charm of Randy, a character who showed that an adult is capable of being just as immature as a child, began to plummet. Not to say every episode in the past few years was like this, or that I wasn't enjoying the show the entire time, they still had me tuning in every week for a reason, but it wasn't the South Park I fell in love with. Then, something happened. A terrible year that's had continuous negative impact on just about everyone in various ways gave South Park a second gust of wind. This is not a constellation prize by any stretch of the imagination. When it comes to priorities, the quality of South Park is leagues below the horrors of 2020. But while watching the brand new pandemic special, I couldn't help but to realize I'm really enjoying this. Hell, my girlfriend who doesn't even care for South Park was enjoying it. To say that this was on par with South Park in its prime would be a stretch, but I do think the pandemic special largely rectified most of the issues South Park was facing over the last few years. 2020 lends itself so well to the current state of South Park. Hell, a plot point from last season has the perfect retcon due to the pandemic. And with entertainment being affected all across the board, animation trucking along but still facing hiccups, South Park episodes being produced in under a week probably didn't sound manageable or desirable behind the scenes. But there was room for compromise. Now, I'm just speculating, but considering Randy's meta-commentary at the end, it sounds like specials are going to be South Park's replacement for weekly episodes this year. We don't get 22 minutes a week for two to three months, but a solid hour of content every month? Every other month? Well, I can't complain about that, because this special worked, and I'm gonna ramble on about why. I guess the place to start would be with the special itself. As a return of television in a time where everything is on fire, some places more literal than others, and I hope everyone is staying safe. Safe, there was obviously a lot needed to be covered. What was dope is that everything was connected, from the show to 2020 itself. Randy is the cause of COVID-19 spreading from an animal to a human, as after the events of last season's episode, Banned in China, Randy and Mickey Mouse got so blasted that they, uh, well, let's just say Mickey's into some weird shit. Yeah, it's a to be honest, Matt and Trey probably had this twist in the works from the moment they heard of the virus's origin. The pandemic affects not just the adults, but the kids. And when it comes to the aforementioned lack of focus on the kids in South Park, this is perfect. And this time they were able to keep the kids involved even further because of, guess what? The police. Whom, after being defunded in South Park, now have to fill in for the teachers who don't want to come in during COVID. And of course, when it comes to Tegrity Farms, weed sales have skyrocketed since the pandemic. A poke at the depressing reality of 2020. In a time where we're all stuck inside, in our own heads, dealing with fluctuating sleep schedules and appetites, feeling the weight of the world on our shoulders at any given moment, people have turned to escapism, substance abuse, and unhealthy coping mechanisms just to feel normal. Or at least, decent enough to feel as if they're not going insane. This is something they kinda slipped in with Disney, as we see that Mickey has a lot on his own plate. 
demanding them to sell the Epcot Center, and one of my favorite gags of the episode, ordering more Mandalorian. I don't know if anyone's been keeping tabs on Disney, but uh, it's pretty wild and pretty nasty over there, especially when it comes to the theme parks. Seriously, my thoughts go out to the workers. There's a reason they had $30 Mulan, y'all. The world stood still and they took a hit. And a lot of their guaranteed success for the future lies within streaming and releasing as much content, as much escapism as possible on their own platform. This kind of goes hand in hand with what the boys are dealing with. Stan misses having a normal life and is projecting onto Butters, wanting to take him to Boda Bear for a sense of normalcy. Meanwhile, Cartman is loving the pandemic and is furious that he has to go back to school and not just take online classes. These two stories were great. We really haven't gotten much entertainment that's specific to the pandemic, but I found this to be a true-to-life portrayal of what people are going through right now. It did a great job of showing how the pandemic is affecting two different people that can have both of these reactions at pretty much any age. There are kids like Stan who miss a normal life. Going to malls, movies, and restaurants without masks and social distancing, or businesses having to shut down due to a decrease of traffic. But people are also going through this in their teenage years, their early 20s, their 30s, their 40s, 50s, and so on. So many people relied on the day-to-day -day activities of the modern world. Having that stripped away or greatly altered, it's something we weren't conditioned or prepared for. And adapting to that change, even after all of these months, it's not an easy task. But there are people like Hartman who love being introverted, they don't want to go outside where there's people. I'm sure the idea of things opening back up, having to go back to school, made a lot of people furious. But I digress. We even got a return of a good Stan monologue like the old days. They nailed the commentary on social distancing and masks, the refusal to wear masks properly, calling them chin diapers, curbside pickup, the news constantly reminding us that they're working on a vaccine, we're not gonna be in this forever. I like that none of those things became a big focus of the episode. They were mainly just utilized for small gags here and there. And frankly, I don't think we needed a full episode on just social distancing. Good on South Park for not dragging that out. Also, death returns for the first time in forever, creeping in on various characters. If these specials are going to use some of the more iconic characters from throughout the series without them eclipsing the main cast, I am here for it, and I welcome it with open arms. This is what long-running franchises should do. You have a legacy. You have a wide catalog of characters that you never use. Hey, you're trying something different? Use them. No harm, no foul. I also found it smart to have a family relative of one of the boys catch COVID, in this case Jimbo, though I thought more of the characters would have caught it. But I think that's something worth appreciating about this special. While they could definitely go more into anti-maskers and everything in the following special, I think they avoided alienating most viewers because they're well aware that everyone on both sides is tired of this shit. People who wear a mask without a problem are still tired of wearing a mask. But it's how we're getting out of this. Meanwhile, people who are more uptight about wearing a mask or let their nose peek out, whatever the case may be, not only are they tired of it, they basically treat it as if it doesn't exist. So just reducing everything to just, ah, these masks though, probably avoided a lot of bro, this show is trash tweets. Randy tried to create a vaccine, created super spreaders with mustaches instead, and it was that kind of larger-than-life fictional but goofy element of South Park that I personally thought was lacking or wasn't as strong in previous seasons. Also, the fact that it's meta-commentary of the show. Oh, you're enjoying this pandemic special? Oh no, you're turning into a Randy! President Garrison makes an appearance. We get into Trump jabs. But there's a great callback and mention of Mr. Slave. I'm hoping that with these specials, that could have actually been planning the seeds for the next special, considering Garrison will very likely be involved with the election right around the corner. And we definitely know where South Park stands on cops. Wouldn't be a hot take for me to say that they absolutely nailed it! If it weren't for COVID, all the previous teachers would have still been here, we wouldn't have been in the class, and nobody would have gotten shot. Therefore, the young man is in the hospital due to COVID. Ultimately, I don't think a regular South Park season could have handled everything as well as this special did. I felt like we could have had an episode solely on social distancing and masks, an episode on actually quarantining, an episode to President Garrison's response to the pandemic, an episode on defund the police. You get the idea. It would have been a lot, and it would have been draining, especially because Randy would have been in the forefront again for the entire duration. An hour-long format focused on the topic of the pandemic, with smaller commentaries here and there, saved all of these individual topics from becoming sale. 
The screen time felt evenly divided between Randy and the kids, and Randy's was an interesting enough roller coaster that was more than just about him selling weed for the first time in forever. I was able to be invested in his story. Would I have preferred more of the boys though? Absolutely. Still, this sets the precedent for however many more specials they have on the way. Randy will always have a prominent force in the show nowadays, but at least the boys have the groundwork to be just as relevant again. In terms of staying in the mainstream and having people gradually excited for the show, I think the specials are beneficial compared to a standard season of the show as well. Although we have yet to see how the move to HBO Max will affect South Park's streaming presence, people have grown accustomed to hour-long episodes, alongside streaming movies, specials, and binge culture anyways, so now South Park feels a lot more like an event while also giving people ample time to sit down and watch before the next installment. Considering this came out on the last day of September, we could see another special at the end of October. I wouldn't rule out the 28th, but I personally think it would be best to wait until the middle or end of November for an election special, and then early 2021 for a special that covers whatever the hell the end of 2020 looks like. Though assuming they don't want their hype to die down from too long of a gap between specials, I suspect we could have a Halloween special at the end of October that commentates on trick-or-treating during the pandemic and the brewing tension of the election. The end of November could then have a post-election special, looking at the fallout all throughout the month, while also incorporating the release of the PS5, and thus another console war episode. Alongside how Black Friday and Thanksgiving culture looks in the pandemic, and maybe a December end of 2020 special. Personally, I'm just fine with a trilogy of September, October, November, but you know, four can't hurt. Hell, I wouldn't mind a spring special either. I miss South Park during the first half of the year. But as always, these are just my thoughts, and I want to hear yours. What do you think? What are your thoughts on the South Park pandemic special? If you had any major issues with South Park over the last few years, did these fix any of them for you? Why or why not? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below, or let us know your thoughts at RhymeTableVids. And for more of my own thoughts, you can find me on Austric Thoughts. We are on both Twitter and Instagram. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a like and subscribe to the Roundtable for more great cartoon content. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have an awesome day. Austric Thoughts, signing out.